Uh, hello everyone. So this is Gokul Raj. So today we are going to see about uh, uh, ML pre-trained uh, model, which I'm going to use it without any pre-trained models. So for that, I have taken uh, a data set, which is called uh, detecting fraud job uh, postings. So using data analyst and predicting without any predefined ML models. So which, which is similar to custom weighted model. So we can uh, talk about that later. So I'll dive into the problem. So I have taken the fake job posting data set. So that is from Kaggle.com. So which is open uh, source. You can even get it. So basic uh, things about this data set is about, uh, we have uh, 17,800 rows. So in which the final, we have two categories. Uh, that are fraud and non-fraud. So if, if fraudulent is zero, then this row is said to be uh, non-fraud data. If uh, fraudulent is said to be one, then it is said to be a fraud data. Okay, so this is a basic description of uh, this problem. So we have about uh, 17 columns, uh, which are basic necessaries of uh, uh, a job posting, such as title, location, department, salary range, uh, some things, etc. So if basic things about this is like some, some columns, like say the uh, company profile description requirement benefits. So these columns are like a kind of object, so which, which consists of paragraph kind of data. So, and then uh, even uh, location title, it is kind of, we can, we can consider that, uh, that to be a paragraph. Okay. Uh, let's say like location department salary range, uh, salary range. And then uh, telecommunication has company logo, has question employment time, required ex okay. uh, required experience education. So the, these data are like categorical kind of data. We, we can even uh, convert this. Uh, we can't convert anything to numerical. So we have only these kinds of data. So if we take about uh, null values, so we'll talk about uh, null values later. So if we compare that data so like in two categories, fraud and non-fraud. So we have about 4.8% of uh, fraudulent data in this data set, and then 95.16% uh, of non-fraud data, uh, which is very comparatively high for uh, getting a proper efficiency. So we need to train it more efficiently to get it a proper output response. Okay, so if you see the null values, uh, we can see that Columns from these columns are like very high null values. So let's say we have two options, either to fill it or drop it. So let's say we drop it first. So if we drop it, so from 95%, which is like a fraud, non-fraud data, if we drop all the rows which have any one null value, so we end up with just 6,000 6, rows. And then for a uh, fraudulent data, we if we drop any one row with uh, having a null value, so we end up with uh, just 200 rows. Let's say if we consider this as a case, like just we have about just 6,000 rows, it is not even a good enough to train a proper pre-modeling. So it it is not even suggested to drop these rows. So we somehow we need to fill it. So we need to get the correlation between columns and then we need to fill it accordingly. So like that, I found correlation between department and function. So which is like more than 60% that are correlated. So we can see that uh, when I fill this matching and de department and function column, uh, we, we I can see that there are uh, 8,300 rows matching and 4,600 rows that is not matching. So literally it is like double the time it is matching. So we say like 66% that is matching and 33% that is not matching. So we consider that as a case, like it is even correlated. So we fill about like 11,000 rows. And then still we end up with just 4,900 rows in remaining to be null values. So by this filling, so we have reduced null values for department column from 64% to 27%. And then the same way, like why, why, why was uh, with the department values, we fill the function values. So what we do, we again do that the same thing. So we convert, I mean, we reduce the null values for function column from 36% to 27%. Okay. 
So we finally found that a, a, even though after filling null values, we have even some null values that are both common, like null values in department column as well as null values in function column as well. So we can't fill that like null null uh, in that case, right? So we have predicted one functionalities in that. So given that both columns, department and functions are null, it to be fraud, we have a case of 257 counts. So that is like 5% of data. So if both columns have one not, uh, null, so that to be a non-fraud is that we have about uh, 4,600. So if it is, if both the columns has null values, so that row is said to be fraud is like 5%. And then if both rows has no null, mean null, then it is said to be a non-fraud it is 94 percent so there is a difference between both those like you can say like these both add up it, it is not giving up to yeah, it is giving up to one yeah right. okay so uh after fixing the those things we come with the required education employment type so we use uh data frame so we here also we found correlation between them so we filled up about uh, 4,800 rows. And then for similarly, the vice versa case, so we filled a uh, required em employment type with uh, 224 pounds. So from this, we reduced that to 18, 18 percentage. So we finally found that if, if null we have both null values in required education and uh, employment type, the row is said to be fraud is like 6% and then it is said to be a non-fraud, it is 93%, even though it is high. So we need a proper uh, column separations for finding it as null or non-null because the range gap between the, these things, right? So it is like very vast in difference. So 6% and 93% will obviously result in 93%. So we can't even define which the row is like true or I mean fraud or non-fraud. So we need to increase this gap something like Fraud data has to be weighted more and then which is similar to non-fraud data. So this is just a filling of null values, right? So we will uh, take that uh, later. So after uh, filling that, we fill this null required experience. So for required experience, we take another two columns into consideration, employment type and required education. So we end up with a multi-indexed data frame. So where... Uh, we compare index with required experience that has to be filled and then columns for employment company, employment type and required education. So values will be like total count. So let's consider if required experience is associate. Okay, so in that in associate, uh, we have something called uh, employment type that is missing. So we find which value is higher than this so we find that for a full time it is like associate degree is like 122 so we fill that value like that so by comparing all those values with each other with this multi-index data frame so we filled up about uh, 3800 rows so from which for required experience we reduced from 39 percent to 17 percent which is very decent and then for even for salary range, we took up with uh, uh, other four columns into consideration. For salary range, we took up department, employment type, required experience, and required education. So other other columns like uh, salary range, which is uh, very different. So salary range was having come some kind of objects. So that is like very bad in uh, normalizing. So we normalize the data. We consider like about uh, seven seven bins here so which is starting from 2500 till uh, greater than 17500 so this normalization is like not very accurate so we can even uh, have a very accurate normalizations here so uh analyzing the salary range column very more even efficiently so what we do is like uh, we fill this uh, normalizing data so we consider that so we took uh, index as salary range column as department Employment time required experience and required education. So, and then the value comes here. So, for this, 
if uh, salary range is not given so we are given with other three times right so let's say we are given with so let's say here the consideration is if salary range is null so okay that is so we need to enter with a fill value so okay fill value will be coming from uh, d16 for uh, m multi index so where is dm d16 of multi index okay so m index so which will come from tuple of total count okay that is here total count and then str of department of i okay that is the corresponding department name employee employment type name and then required experience and then we compare all the things with these count value so we take that and then m index so this m index will give that uh, entire uh, tuple so that is will go with this m function so this m function will return only the max value that is present in that particular row so we fill that value into this salary range so according to this we fill up about eight nine thousand rows so we have just very small matching case but that is the only way we can have it so we reduced salary range from 83% to 33% that is very good amount of depending so similarly for uh, salary range we have considered like which is fraud and which is not fraud but but fixing for benefits is very uncommon so benefit has like kind of paragraph kind of data so we can't even fill it so we filled it with uh, mean value sorry mode value so which is even occurring there so after filling all these null values we remind with uh, maybe uh, see like let's say we remind with like 40 to I mean sorry 30 27 and 18 percentage of null values so even that is like very bad in considering for a pre-model training so we fill those those un, uh, unspecified null values with uh, unknown salary department benefits and functions so we finally have like zero null values in every column so we step into like correlation and some eda in this data set uh, when we compare with the company profile so we find that company profile is some kind of paragraph kind of data so that is not in new link but it is in same link so we have a wide range of data so what we do our uh, aim is to get keywords which are uh, eventually there in company profile with keywords for a uh, fraud data and keywords for non-fraud data so we need to get, get the keywords separately for fraud data separately and non-fraud data separately with, with their uh, number of occurrences so that is the dictionary so we are aiming for so what we do uh, we use stock words word tokenization and limitization so on a company profile uh, individually so we split all those words and then what i do i found that so we have kind of url phone number and email id so that is even present in company profile so we are have two choices here so we can drop it or we, we don't consider it or like we can even use this as a case even better so we what we do we did it is so we converted those url phone number and email id kind of unwanted things into a proper invalid url invalid email id and phone number so we even compare that now so after finding a key so company profile for fraud data so that is treated it separately so we found all the keywords only for fraud in company profile so this keyword is saved and even same for non-fraud data so for fraud data the keywords are separate and non-fraud uh, data the keywords are separate we even have a case like even some keywords even that can overlap each other both, both the data so that is not our case so as of now we just split those keywords and skip it separately even for getting more accuracy on uh, fraud data so what we did is we take took all the occurrences of each and every keyword but for a non-fraud keyword we have a variety of uh, I'm sorry wide range of uh, band right so we took only keywords that are occurring more than 100 
100 occurrences so that can even equalize their gap okay, so we did this similar process for a uh, columns which we have with like a uh, paragraph kind of data a huge string data so for uh, description it is same similarly similarly we did like that and even for requirements i did like that and even for title we did like that so we found all the keywords for fraud data non fraud data and we saved it even for location we did like that in location we found a uh, eda something like we plot a data like for a fraud country in us has a very high accuracy and for a non fraud even it is us so it is same and for a country capital so it could be if if western is given even it has a high amount of fraud data but if it is not given entirely not given so even in that case we have a very high fraud there same similarly for non fraud so that is not even like helping us like how to split this data okay for department kind of things we have just um, let's say length is about 1300 so we have a kind of 1300 values here so that is kind of categorical data so what we do we just split it department and then if for even for department we have this keywords and for salary range, we have uh, just this kind of data, just seven or eight uh, categories. So we don't use uh, NLP here. So we directly find that keyword. So we've printed that dictionary. So similarly like this, we'll be having keyword or dictionary for even above the cases, nothing like this, even for non-fraud. So it is something like that. See, if you see, right? So for a fraud data in salary range, so, Unknown salary is like 338 times repeating. And even for a uh, non-fraud data, unknown salary, we have about uh, 5,600 cases, right? So if, which is even higher, like it is not even the like, same, okay? So we compare that with the uh, normal graph. Mm, even for benefits, we do the same. So literally finding all the keywords, employment type, categorical data. So we do the same occurrences so we even compare that with our graph even for required experience in in required experience we can see that the mid senior level is like high for both the scenarios for fraud and non fraud uh, required education okay. in required education we see that a bachelor's degree is uh, high in both the cases so for industries as well and functions as well. So in, in even all the cases, we find all the keywords and save it uh, as of now with their counts. And for telecommunication, we can see that it is like totally correlated. So we have a telecommunication to be zero. Then it is a non-fraud. Something like that. So we have category kind of two category kind of data. The bivariant data that is like uh, has company logo, telecommunication, and uh, ask question. So these are bivariants. So we can see that uh, telecommunication. Okay, so this is one. So if telecommunication is zero, company profile logo is one, and has question is one, then that to be a non fraud is 7,333 occurrences. So if that needs to be a fraud, so we need to have everything as zero, zero, zero. So if we have like all the categories to be zero, then it is to be a fraud. So some, this in by this way, we have taken all the keyword dictionary pairs of all the 17 columns. So we have saved it. So what we have, thought of about us like we use a custom weighted modeling so pre-processing is done so we need to weight that model now so how will you weight it so it is according to the total number of occurrences that is there in this column let's say benefits so we go with benefits column so in benefits column we have about uh, many keywords in benefits let's say in fraud data benefits we have about uh, 100 keywords and non-fraud data benefits 
we have about uh, thousand uh, keywords. So some keywords are repeating for like 15, 20 times or something like that. So what we do, we just in fraud benefits data, sorry, key, uh, benefits uh, keyword for a fraud, uh, non-fraud data, for a fraud data. So we just sum all the values here and then we give it. So that is 17,919 uh, occurrences of total keywords that is there and then for a non-fraud data it is like uh, 12,305 so that is for non-fraud data even for company profile total length of keywords that are repeating so the total count of their sum so that is 18,000 and okay. let's say for a company profile that is a non-fraud data so we have about 7,89,218 so what we do here is so what we do Let's say we have in company profile, we have a word called, uh, let's say word called sale. So in it, it can be even in fraud data as well as in non-fraud data. Let's say sale is repeating for 10 times in company profile for a fraud data and sale is repeating for uh, 100 times in non-fraud data in same company profile. So occurrences, I mean count is different. Length is different, but the keyword is same. So how you wait for this is like for a fraud sale, a sale which is present in fraud uh, dictionary. So uh, dictionary. So we'll be dividing ten divided by eighteen thousand four hundred and thirty-three. So that is given here. Count divided by total company profile sum. So and then for a non-fraud data, the same sum will be divided with. 100 divided by 7,89,281. So the total keywords, which their sum add up to one. You got it, right? So total count is 7,89,000. So we divide every count with their uh, corresponding total length, so which lead up to one. So that's it. So this is how we weight every column, each and individually. So this process is repeated for entire 17 columns. In some cases, we can see like uh, that can be weighted more depending upon their occurrences. That's it. So this pre-model is about basically how words are repeating for a fraud data and non-fraud data. So if we have a very huge amount of data to be compared, so we can give it in a very big, good, even good efficiency in the, in the end. Okay, so we are done with our uh, pre-trained model. So we directly end up with testing now. So for testing, we took 880 rows that are last. So what I did, we for adding, right? So we need to add that weighted model, I mean weight uh, for each and every column. So I'll be saving this in uh, this two columns, weighted fraud and weighted non-fraud. Weighted fraud will be having the fraud uh, data and weighted non-fraud will be having the non-fraud data. Okay. Wait for non-fraud. So um, for uh, even for 880 rows, like we need to uh, do all the pre-processing, right? So similarly for like from first, we need to do everything like that. So what I did, so we I did like that. And then uh, I just, uh, at the last what I did, so I just compared this uh, test samples that is weighted fraud plus equal to are the weightage of particular word. So word is coming from DS of title. So we split this title, pre-process it. We get all the key words so that are present in the title. So in that, so if that particular word is present in that pre-process the title, so we add up that weightage into this fraud data in that particular column. So we repeat this process in, in like uh, 17 I mean, for all the rows. So for even for all the 17 columns. So finally, so this, this is a process like we are repeating it. So finally we can get our data like this. So for a weighted fraud and weighted non-fraud, we'll be getting some values like 4.27 uh, and for a weighted non-fraud, it will be like 4.47. So you can imagine like how it will be like working. So at last, we'll be getting these two final uh, columns for deciding 
which is fraud and which is not fraud. So it is simple. Like if weighted fraud value is higher than weighted non-fraud, so that is to be fraud. So if weighted non-fraud is greater than weighted fraud, it is non-fraud. Similarly like that. So we see that in some cases it is this 0.3 maybe. So in some cases it is even uh, say, let's say it, it is even more like C 0.2 which is very much close. So in these cases we, we are not even sure, right? Uh, but in these cases we are uh, it, it is like very much but it is damn sure, right? based on the keyboard. So we go with the efficiency and confusion matrix. So we can see that. So of top 880 rate, 880 days loss. So actual one was like uh, 293. So it detected 293, but it didn't detect 92. So which is okay. Uh, but it detected uh, 460 correctly. So which is very high. Okay. So our F1 score is like 0.82. I just could accuracy is 85 percent it is also good okay so uh okay we can even improve its uh, efficiency accuracy by in, in future purpose like even more doing edm let's say in column uh column location right yeah in location so we have uh, three columns we have three column I mean, sorry in location we have uh, three data capital and uh, capital pin and capital name so we can even split that we can have it uh, with the uh, three rows So in this uh, location, we can split this column into three and then we can train it even with that. So, so like that, we can even improve its efficiency. In future case, we can even apply some other models to increase its accuracy. Uh, that's it. Thank you.